All right, troopers, uh, here we are today. The project of the day is Goldie. Uh, we're working on getting Goldie some uh, good back brakes going on here. A uh, little bit of a squeak developed after doing some off-roading. And so I decided to get in there and clean the dickens out of everything. And uh, I power washed a whole lot of stuff. Uh, right now we're getting ready to do a full brake job here. We're uh, calipers, rotors, and pads. Um, no problems that I'm aware of with the brake cables or the um, rear lines, but uh, I don't use the brake uh, because this one does like to stick on. And as you can see from the rotor itself, it's uh, it's not even making full contact. It's got a real heavy friction groove there, um, so she's pretty beat. And it's time to swap those ones out because I need good brakes. Uh, gonna put this baby through some mileage. And uh, I got all set up for that. So I do have the uh, the new rotors on the other side here. This is a nice set of uh, Rebestus uh, rotors, and I've just done a little bit of cleaning. There's some schmoo on there from packing oil, and I'm just going to use a little bit of break-in, uh, clean flow break-in, uh, just to start these rotors out. So they'll get a basically a quick little paint job there. Uh, the clean flow cleaned up the schmoo pretty good. Here's the other side not looking so healthy um, you know this equipment isn't completely beat I've seen worse there is some pad on this side but uh, we're getting lower on the other side uh, over on the passenger side so with a good cleaning I can tell that uh, Goldie definitely could use some undercarriage protection and, and some rock guard but uh, to inspect the brake pads what I've done is I've gone in here with a flashlight right so I get the wheels off and I clean everything off I'm very leery of asbestos dust and, and I get my flashlight spot, uh, you know, I focus the beam on my flashlight to a little tiny pinpoint and I get in there and have a look at the pads and try and get a look on, on both sides to see how much pad wear you've got. Um, what can you tell from the outside? Does it have any uh, uneven wear that's obvious? Are the clips out of place or missing? Um, how does your bleeder nipple look? How does your slider arm and your spring mechanism work? look um, and and again I'm probably gonna have to have a new set of cotter pins here when I change these uh, calipers out so um, after those rotors are prepped I'm gonna get ready to put those on but before I do take these off I'm gonna get that clean flow brake cleaner and I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna clean uh, anything that that could be some remaining asbestos dust in there and I'm gonna let that drip down onto the old shop diaper there and it'll catch whatever's going on there. Um, of course, I'm leery of that uh, brake cleaner and, and parts cleaner. After it does fall down and it creates a pool, it's going to take a while to evaporate. And of course, beware that this is uh, flammable fluid. Um, pretty much every brake cleaner I've ever worked with is flammable. So um, if you're, you know, cutting anything in a spark, whatever, you know. Anyway, so to uh, to prep my tools here, I've just gone into uh, certain points, and including the brake meter uh, bleeders, uh, I've I've gone in there with some uh, penetrating lube, and uh, I've got my 12-inch uh, for the caliper pin, and my uh, 17 up here, getting ready to use my uh, non-approved method uh, for uh, breaking those main bolts, and then from there I'll just ratchet those off with the air ratchet uh, to get them out of the way quick. Uh, but a little heads up here when you do go to order calipers, uh, these are all Raybestos uh, uh, rebuilt calipers, and uh, it, it you know they're widely available through my parts distributor. But uh, when I do get them in, there's slight differences between them all, and uh, it, it, uh, it kind of wigs me out. I, I wish I could just get a matching set, but um, you know sometimes I have to order uh, more than one set to uh, to get a pair that I'm happy with. Um, in this case, you know, just minor differences that you can see from the rebuilding. Um, for instance, we got a silver spring over here. Uh, we got a black coated spring over here. And, you know, this one here has been sprayed a little gray. Um, and uh, this caliper here also has the clip for the e-brake cable. And it came with that. Um, but uh, it, was, it was missing its actual slider bolt right here. So that didn't come with it. You know, this, this bolt right here. Right, a slider pin, and uh, the clips for it were not in a bag. Um, oh wow, we're dumping scrap, scrap steel next door here. You know, like these clips here, they they always come with it, the caliper, and uh, they're in a bag usually. I may have an extra slider pin sitting in one of these bags. 
But uh, anyways, uh, then from there I've got the uh, the Raybestos brake pads. Um, the uh, the part number for these Raybestos brake pads right here, uh, PGD 398M, and those are going to fit any 87 to 91 Trooper uh, KB84. Uh, of course, I like my uh, Permatex uh, disc brake caliper lube. Um, uh, you know, cautious where I put that, of course, uh, don't want to be too uh, generous with that. And uh, the Dot 3 Lucas, and I'm also going to be doing a fuel filter change. Uh, so a little tip for that is uh, that I like to uh, use Jiffy, and I write the mileage on the fuel filter uh, in case I do happen to change uh, ownership and the new person or the new mechanic will get a look at that. Uh, a couple of zap straps to, uh, to hold these calipers up if I need to. I just keep them handy so I don't have to leave it on the brake line while I go into the shop. If the brake lines are that tender that they do break under the weight of the caliper, then it's probably time for a new brake hose anyways, um, because normally they are tough enough to take the weight, but I just don't like to do it. It's a good practice to hang them up before you get started um, on uh, you know removing your brake rotor or whatever it is you're doing. If you're trying to keep your line connected, and uh, you're not replacing your calipers, then it's definitely good to treat them carefully. Uh, so yeah, just a couple extra wrenches laying around, uh, and uh, you're good to go. Um, I'm going to do this uh, single-handed, so I will be doing a pretty slow brake bleed on this. To get started, I'm going to go get my uh, you know big uh, fuck-off syringe uh, for evacuating the uh, master cylinder, or, or just a little handheld uh, evacuation pump, something like that. Um, I personally find the, the 60 uh, mil syringes work really well for me. Um, here's one right here. And a little filter pack. There we go. These are beautiful. So I'm just going to go uh, evacuate all the dot three out, throw it into an old bucket. And um, then I'm going to have less in the lines when I go to break these. Uh, so then the rest will drain from the line into my bucket and I'll get ready to do my brake bleed later. Uh, Single-handed, of course, it is much slower. Um, you know, it, it really is like you know probably six times slower than it would be to have a partner there just to press the brake pedal for you. Um, my assistant's not here today. He and I have developed a pretty good system at it because we've been doing a lot of dot three lately. But anyways, uh, I'll show you these brakes when they're done, and it's uh, you know it's pretty much break these two nuts off on the bottom of the calipers and uh, you don't even have to uh, really take your caliper pin out a lot of the times you can just pull it back slide it off of there I get a pry bar up here in the top between the rotor and the caliper if I need to uh, rust and the grooves that develop between the pad and the rotor will actually keep that on there you know it'll feel very firm you're trying to get it to move so um, Anyways, uh, that's what I'm doing for a little project of the day. Get this baby more reliable and get that e-brake uh, working on a daily basis. Those rear calipers are all too important for that. Anyways, rubber side down, fellas. Later.